My presentation is going to speak about the role that we play, just like we said earlier, and why we need to be intentional about our storytelling before we even approach using AI as a tool. It's very important because if we have this in mind, then our approach towards creating and what we're doing will always be intentional. So, um, Hollywood, we already know about Hollywood and the films and how intentional they are with their propaganda or the message they're trying to pass or everything. It's been for many years, from you know the first film of Better of a Nation, even to House Party in the 90s. You know, the influence trends, the influence fashion, the influence how we speak, how we behave sometimes, you know, the music we listen to, the swear words that we used to use back then, everything was influenced by pop culture, Hollywood music and all of that. And that's to show you the power of storytelling. Um, now, what we also need to understand that yes, these things happen, but it's also, like an enhanced reflection of the environment, of who we are, but they kind of enhance it and they add what you should be doing kind of thing, how you should behave. That's what you know Hollywood does when they're trying to create certain things. So, um, like I said, in Africa, when we're telling our own stories, we're focused mostly on the bad news. We're focused mostly on you know, everything that has to do with us trying to hustle or us the government not doing good or the government doing certain things. Because we're trying to come out of a certain space here. It's understandable, but this will always happen. It happens everywhere. But we also need to focus on the good PR of our company, of our country, like the good sides of it, because that's how we attract investors. A lot of investors have left Nigeria. Why have they left? because of all these things that have been happening and the image that we have. Um, so like I said earlier, the inception of photography was in 1896 you know, in Lagos, in West Africa, by the man called Ludwig. And you know, when he came, this were the kind of pictures that were taken. This is Delta State, 1909 in Nigeria. Um, we are being numbered. And that's, that's a chief in Delta. It's not just a common eye as a chief over there, but these are the kind of pictures that are online. Just take your front and a side view, you look like a prisoner, why is that? You know, and when you see the comments under these pictures and the books and in the journals that they were being written or taken, it's most like they're mocking us, like, oh, she is meant to be an important person, something like that, that is what was there. Um, stuff like this, this was in the Congo. So a lot of these pictures, and when you go on Google, you won't see these pictures at first because it's kind of suppressed. But you have to do your research to actually find it. But this is unfortunately what AI is trained on. Um, what did we do wrong? This is also the Congo in the 1930s. What we did wrong is that we didn't do anything about it. So like I said, this is Shutterstock. And this was two weeks ago. I just typed in a boy in Africa. That's all, I, that's all I typed in. And I got this. That is not the representation of African boys. So I don't, I don't, if you type in a boy in America, you would never get this. You know? So we have to think about the approach every single time. So now, today, on Mid Journey, Mid Journey is a tool that we use to create generative AI images, photorealistic images, um, illustrations, and the likes. So if I type in a prompt, and a prompt is how you speak to the tool, and I say African boy, these are the types of things that I get. Keyword boy. If I say black boy, these are the kinds of images that I get. And if I say African kids in the city, these are the kind of images that I get. Off the dome and you wonder why the representation is mostly impoverished. Like, I really don't get it. So, um, this prompt was a boy in Lagos, not even black boy, a boy in Lagos. I can test it for you right now. I, I promise you I'm still gonna get these images. And that's because the neural network is trained on only what it understands. You can't blame them. It's garbage in, garbage out. So if there's no right data, if there's no credible data that represents our culture, our fashion, our, how we look, how we behave, you know, our cities, our, our, our architecture, our archaeology, everything, it's just going to be trained on what a particular site looks like. In, uh, I'm not saying there are not places like this, but this is not the representation of where we are and who we are. So um, when it comes to AI, 
there are two major different sides, and there's a big data side, there's a generative AI side. But I'm going to focus on generative AI because that is mostly what we're used to, and that's mostly what we're going to work with. And like I said, what is it? Machine learning is garbage in, garbage out. Literally, what, it's, what you're training is what you understand. So when you speak to ChatGPT today, and you're trying to get something, it's going to give you a template. It's going to give you just something generic. But the more you train it to understand how you speak, how you interact with it, to give you personalized you know, results in that. And personally, I have explored every single thing here. Normally, I would never be able to do that. But because of the power of AI, I can literally make mistakes, experiment, explore, up until a point that I start to create product for international brands. And that's just mind blowing, if just in 12 months. Um, if you want to create pictures or art or photorealistic images, these are the kind of tools that you can use. Mid Journey Dolly, Stable Diffusion, Ideogram, but personally I use Mid, Mid Journey because that's what I've been using. I know how to train it very well. For music, um, Suno, Udio, Chirp AI, and Google, but the two that I would recommend are Suno and Udio. They are amazing, like for real. If you could create a full song in five minutes, and you have the copyright to it. It's so amazing. So for instance, when, I'm, when I do documentaries, my actual documentaries that I film with real people, I just create my soundtracks using Suno. I don't even have to you know, go on Envato to buy anything anymore. For voicing, for voiceovers, there was a documentary I did recently that I created a voiceover. I couldn't reach my actual voiceover artist, so I said, let me even try 11 Labs. So I altered it to an African Nigerian speaking voice, and I created a voiceover, and nobody knew it was AI, like speaking properly like a Nigerian, and they couldn't tell. So I waited for a bit just to make sure everybody, you know, heard it. And then I said, you know, that as an AI voice, right? They were like, Really? You know, so um, for pictures, for motion pictures, that's videos. Um, I use Runway, I use Luma Labs, Kyber Gen, Mode Current. So each of these tools have different out kinds of outputs that you're getting depending on what you're trying to create. So if you want to use Runway or Luma Labs, is if you're trying to create cinematic visuals and um, Runway just came out with a Gen 3. Kyber is if you're trying to create motion um, moving art that is just having um, 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 different scenes interlined into each other. It's very crazy, very artistic. Same thing as Gemmo and the current. Uh, Pika Labs is very close to Luma Labs, but not as good. So if I'm to recommend, I'll say Runway and Luma Labs. Um, so in the past, what I have used to create, what well, I've used AI to create you know, commercially uh, for brands like the Glenfiddich, um, the video is um, also on my Instagram on my website. It's not going to play here. It's a PDF slide. Uh, so Glenn Fiddick wanted to create a commercial. We did a one minute commercial for them, co-created with AI. So back, this was last year, June. There was no tool then to create AI videos. So I had to think of ways on how to manipulate it. So I created a new pipeline then. Not very useful right now because there are tools to create what I did. So what I did was I went to a stock website and I downloaded stock videos that I could copyright. And what I did with those stock videos was went to Runway and I converted, converted those videos to animations. And from animations, I put it into Premiere Pro and created a story with it. So every video that you see, I wish you could see it, was you know something real that was not manipulated. So not from prompting. Kind of different way to use AI. Um, for IBM, last year as well, they were trying to create, they, po they picked eight different artists from around the world and they wanted to create a different time in history you know so uh, my brief was for the for, you know for the Beatles that they have this very popular song here comes the sun and the popular image on Abbey Road where they were crossing the zebra crossing so they were thinking about what would it be like if the weather back then was not sunny and the song obviously was called here comes the sun they want to see what would happen? What would the artist be doing? Would they have had that song and all of that? So what I created was an uninspired um, songwriter in the snow. And that was showcased in Cannes last year for IBM. Yeah, for Marvel Studios, I got contacted by Ruth Kata. Uh, Ruth Kata is the costume designer for Wakanda. And she told me that you know, she's seen my work and this is what they're trying to create. Can I do it? At that point, I didn't know what I was doing, but I said yes, because I saw the power of AI. And we, we had a meeting, full production meeting, and we created, that's not the image, because 
they will sue me if I put the image there. I signed NDAs. So what we created the costumes for the main actor, um, um, for the vampires, for the villain. We created the art direction, the look and feel, the, the, the lighting feel as well, all using AI. And that was really amazing as well. Also, for fashion designers, for creatives and all of that, you could use AI to create different kinds of patterns. And design, if you're a designer or, or you're an artist, depending on your approach, what are designs? Asymmetric, symmetric, random, um, you know, shapes, images, stuff like that. So you could even sketch on a paper and feed that sketch into the AI software and it gives you images like this. And images like this, you can now replicate it into like a thousand different variations and take it out there, print it out and sell it as a business, like what we did in Amsterdam last year. That's one of the designs that was showcased on the runway in Amsterdam, all co-created by AI as well. Yes, um, for also for a bed sheet company in America, they wanted to create some African-inspired um, sheets, and all of that was co-created using AI, also produced as well. Um, and for the fashion runway that I spoke about earlier, this is actually what changed my life. You know, I was trying to create older people on the runway that I'd never seen before. I've never seen people on the runway that, that age. And while I was trying to create it, I was getting those very bad images. But I've been in this industry for about 15 years. This is my 16th year in the industry. And I've been shooting TV commercials all this while, TV shows, all of that. And I have data. I have hard drives. I have everything. So what I did was I fed it all that data that I had from all the weddings that I've done, all the, you know, docu everything fed it, make it understand the fabric, the look, the feel, like literally opted it up on my own, you know, creative side to show, let it be hip a bit, then this were the images I started to get, and it just went viral from there, and up until today, there have been many conversations by many big designers like Dolce & Gabbana, the Versace's that they've been adding older people to the runway. WHO invited me last year, recognized for speaking for the elders as well, one of your words, a bunch of things. Like this literally turned my life around from where it was to where it is today. And this was the inception of my approach towards AI. Thank you. From my, from my approach towards AI, I was just experimenting. And from here, and I started to create new pipelines on how to solve problems and how to use it for, pro, for different companies and different uses as well. So from that, we now had a real fashion show in Amsterdam as well. We were real models, real people. We had another one in Lagos last December. That, that image is not here. But um, yeah, so this morning, I wanted to see something that was inclined in tune to what we're talking about today, which is leather. And how can I create leather products? How can I create leather boots? So my first approach, which was a mid-journey software that I used, was I want to create high top brown leather boots. That's the first prompt that I use there. When I see where it comes out with, and I start to customize it, or I want gray soles, I want to see the blueprints of it, I want to see the different parts of it. Show me the sole, show me the insole, show me the outside, show me the, 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 the neat thing. So if I was trying to you know, create whatever I was trying to create, and I had a mental block, and I see this now, I'm not being inspired by, I don't have to even replicate it, but now I can see what to do, and I can replicate it if I want to replicate it, and I can alter it, because now, like people are worried, the worry about AI is, oh, it's stealing people's artwork and people's work. This is a generic image. So you can use this, and there are many footwears that look like this. It's a generic design. So you can now alter this generic design to wherever you want it to be, and even get the real world use um, that will look like stuff like this. this. Everything you're seeing was created this morning, by the way. And even if you create your product, you want to see what your products will look like. You can see what it will look like. See how real it looks, that's not real, you know? And I wanted to create the minimalistic looking back with, you know, less zippers and all of that. So you could use a tool to inspire yourself. You could use a tool to create designs. You could, even from here, send these designs, break it down and send it to your producer or production company and you have a product. Even without worrying or thinking about how can I even approach these things. You can make mistakes here before even showing it because normally it's a sketch that you have. This looks like a real product before it's even there. And you can even alter it. I could change the front, change the zippers, whatever I want to change and see it in a real looking space and stuff like this. So I think this is the last image. Yeah, thank you guys. It's good to be here.